Hello dancers and welcome to day 10 of our Corona Quarantine Daily Vlog. Teacher Jola here asking you a question for today. Are you a better dancer today than you were 10 days ago? Hey Teacher Joel, how could I? I've been at, stuck at home. I haven't been taking lessons. I haven't been practicing with my partner. I haven't even gone to the ballroom. How could I be a better dancer? Well, this is my topic of today's vlog. My expectation for all of you watching this video is to become a better dancer every single day, whether it is normal life and you're able to go to the ballroom or our new normal life and you're not able to go. There is a perfect opportunity within all of this crazy chaos where we ourselves can become better dancers. This opportunity is available for us to learn and to improve. And the way that we're able to do this is because we're away from two of our biggest distractions to become better dancers. Distraction number one is our partner. Think, I need my partner to practice. I need my partner to dance. This is ballroom, teacher Joel. But keep this in mind. Partners can be very big distractions, whether we're practicing and we're thinking, okay, what are they doing? Oh, they're pulling me off balance. Oh, now they're asking me to do this and I want to work on that. It can be a big distraction. They want to work on musicality. You want to work on footwork. They want to work on posture. You want to work on power. Now is the time without that distraction to work on what you want to work on. Whatever you want to work on, it's up to you. It's not up to your partner anymore. You can do this for as long as you want, whenever you want, how in depth you want. The second distraction that's not available to us are competitions or shows. These competitions or showcases or even metal tests are wonderful motivators for us to get ourselves out of our homes, into the ballrooms, taking lessons and practicing, but they're also very big distractions on improving our dancing. They are ones, these competitions and shows are there for us to help package what we're doing, but it doesn't help us necessarily improve because improvement is all about being more in-depth breaking things apart, looking at things slowly, understanding them in a more meaningful way, and then slowly developing our skills and becoming a better and better dancer. Whereas competition, it's about let's package, make sure this looks perfect on the dance floor, we go. So we have those two distractions that are out and therefore it leaves you by yourself. It might be a scary thing right now, especially as a dancer, but it really becomes a great opportunity for you to now self-motivate and work on yourself and your skills. Now we're going to use a three-step, we'll say three-step um, process by which I want you to use so that you increase your level of dancing. Step number one is to find some information, whether it's here on this vlog, on a different uh, YouTube channel, whether it's on notes from your uh, previous private lessons, whatever it is, find a piece of information that you can read, watch, listen to, and really try to, part two, is to contemplate what that means. So you've got your information, you contemplate and go, how does that work within my understanding of my dancing? Part three is repetition. Repeat, repeat, repeat. You've heard this a lot of times, the 10,000 hour rule, but really let's be simple about this. And I expect, Teacher Joel expects you to do just five times, just five times. We don't need to do a hundred times. Five times is more than enough to get yourselves started. It's much better than just watching the video that you're watching right now, go, hmm, that was interesting, and then put the phone down or change the channel to another YouTube video. I'm expecting you guys to do five repetitions. I'll give you an example. For instance, hmm, I have a piece of information where it says my right elbow should stay in front of my body and not behind my body in my promenade. So I'll go through that five times. Put myself in a promenade, check myself, good, all right. Let's do that again. Promenade number two, checking myself, starting to get a feeling, great. Let's do it again. Number three, check myself, oh, my elbow is too far behind, let me adjust, great. Repetition number four, ah, looking good. And repetition number five, all right, I'm really ready starting to get a sense and a feel of what I'm trying to accomplish. That just took five repetitions and maybe 15 seconds. And I know that everybody here has at least 15 seconds to go over something five times. Now, as you get yourself used to going through this process, 
feel free to go through many, many different pieces of information and go through that same process. Again, that is number one, find some information. Number two, contemplate that information. Number three, do some repetitions and specifically five repetitions. Now, I would like to conclude this uh, quick little vlog um, with a couple of different stories or ideas. Um, the first one is something that we see very much in movies. Now you think, okay, what does movies have to do with me, Teacher Joel? Well, we have all these movies um, where there's either a singer or a drummer or um, a basketball player or a boxer where they've tried their skill and maybe they failed a few times and they're feeling a little bit dejected. And there's a part in the movie where they're by themselves, they pick themselves up, and they go and they practice by themselves. So that drummer is hitting the drums and practicing over and over and the blood and the sweat and going, 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 going. It could be a singer that's in the studio just singing and singing and singing and practicing their songs. It could be the basketball player that's just out in the schoolyard just throwing those free throws again and again and again just to make sure they're perfect. Or it could even be that boxer running around um, Rocky style and hitting that bag, hitting that bag. And all those things have in common is that they're by themselves. Right now, possibly you are by yourself, or at least away from your regular ballroom people. Here's the perfect opportunity to star in your own movie and maybe put on some rocky music in the background and go through your ballroom dance technique. Practice it, practice it, repetition, repetition, contemplate it, contemplate it, look for that information. The second um, little anecdote that I want to tell you is something that comes from both myself and Clara. Now, many years ago when we had won the provincial championships, um, we decided to stay the rest of the night and do some social dancing with all the other spectators. So here we are, um, BC champions, um, feeling great about our dancing, and we get onto the dance floor during a social dance, and we couldn't do our social waltz. Clara and I couldn't get together and feel like we were able to get ourselves smoothly and effectively and cleanly and together um, around the dance floor. And we thought, holy cow, we know all these complicated routines. We dance them so well, and yet when we have to do something simple, we have no clue how to do this. And that really stuck with us over the years. And what it, what it did, it motivated us to really think twice about what it is that me as teacher Joel, well, not back then teacher Joel, just plain old Joel and Clara, we're doing, and as we become better and better dancers, we continue to ask ourselves, what do I need to do better? And I'm asking you now, I'm demanding you, you need to ask what you need to do better. Not what your partner needs to do better, not what your teacher needs to tell you and, and, and give more information and that little piece of perfect information to make it work. It's what you need to do better. And this is something that we have to introspectively look at ourselves and go, can we make a difference? And the answer is, I know you can, totally. Over the years, over the years, Clara and I have now become much better dancers than when we were competing. And it's not just because we're teaching, but it's because we've had the time and we force ourselves to really look at our own dancing and question, why is it that we do this in the whisk? Why is it that we do that in the natural turn? How come this in the progressive link is feeling like that? And we question ourselves constantly and be able to understand the technique and our bodies and the figures much better. This is the perfect opportunity because again, we're not able to go to the ballroom and have two, two hour practices. We're not able to go out with friends and have these long dinners at a restaurant. So please take this opportunity. I know it's a real challenging time for everybody. It's a challenging time for myself, for Clara, for the kids and our families. Um, but take this as an opportunity for you to be able to become a better dancer yourself. And for you then, when we do get back to the ballroom, for us to be able to dance at a higher level and not just try to struggle and get ourselves back to where we were before this all started. This is my expectation for you guys to become better every single day. Now, in the next vlogs coming ahead, um, I'm going to be going in much more detail for both beginner, ad, uh, intermediate, and advanced dancers on specifics, techniques, tools and tips for different figures. So please stay tuned for that. And as always, please communicate with us, whether it's again through email or the comments below. We'd love to get your feedback. I love getting our emails back from people as well. 
um, telling me how much they're enjoying and how much um, they want to learn this or that. That's it from Teacher Joel. I'm looking forward to having you guys improve. I'm looking for me to improve this vlogging experience as well. Thanks very much, and I'll see you in the next video.